Tonight, the desperate search in the North Atlantic for a missing submersible near the Titanic. The U.S. and Canadian Coast Guard scouring for a sub carrying five people. Contact lost for more than 24 hours as the tourist vessel made its way toward the Titanic. 12,000 feet down, rough seas, rain, and fog hampering the search and rescue efforts for those on board, including a billionaire businessman and explorer. Late details just in tonight. Also tonight, the high-stakes summit between China's President Xi Jinping and Secretary of State Antony Blinken. A chance to reset rising tensions that have only gotten worse since the U.S. shot down a spy balloon. Our one-on-one -on -one interview with the Secretary of State. The nonstop threat of tornadoes, one dead and almost two dozen injured as multiple tornadoes tear through Mississippi. The search for survivors. A weekend of mass shootings, some of them deadly. But when it happened twice last month in another country, they took quick and decisive action. Richard Angle is there. The new boom in building, not to buy, but to rent. What's behind it in our series, Priced Out. On Juneteenth, celebrations across America and a field of dreams reborn as a testament to the past. This is NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Good evening and welcome. Tonight near the site of one of the 20th century's worst ocean disasters, a new undersea drama is unfolding. Right now, the U.S. Coast Guard leading the urgent search for a group of modern-day adversable carrying them to the Titanic shipwreck lost contact with the surface yesterday, about an hour and 45 minutes into their journey. Five people are on board the vessel, which is used to carry paying passengers to see the Titanic up close. The search happening about 350 miles off the coast of Newfoundland in waters more than two miles deep. Tire focus is on the crew members and their family. U.S. and Canadian Coast Guard ships are at this hour rushing to the North Atlantic. As two I understand it, submersibles are meant to dive much deeper than, say, a typical Navy sub. If the Coast Guard can locate it yeah. under the surface, can assets to the scene as well as contacting private companies who have those capabilities. But if they find these, this crew, it's going to be a very, very... Let's turn now to that critical meeting in China today between President Xi Jinping and Secretary of State Antony Blinken with relations at a low point. Blinken now touting progress in an interview with Janice Mackey Freyer. In Mississippi, at least one person died and almost two dozen were injured by an overnight tornado, the latest in a wave of destructive storms. Blaine Alexander reports. And we have breaking news tonight about the first named storm in the Atlantic this season. Tropical storm Brett has formed in the central Atlantic. It's about 1,300 miles from the Lesser Antilles. Across America, the long weekend, a string of mass shootings. Near Chicago, 23 people were shot, one of them fatally during a Juneteenth event yesterday. In Kellogg, Idaho, four people were shot and killed. A suspect was arrested. And in San Francisco, six people were injured in a shootout involving two cars. Two were hit by stray bullets and two young girls were hit by the car. In Washington, over to how to stop the violence, tonight Richard Engel reports on how lawmakers in Serbia responded following two mass shootings th there. Serbians didn't see it coming. On May 3rd, a 13-year-old boy stormed into a school with his father's two guns and a hit list and killed eight. In 60 seconds, tracking who gets an abortion. One state tried to make sure personal data isn't used to follow women who are driving there for the procedure. Plus, the new housing boom in rentals. Get nice things with nice prices at Wayfair. Wayfair. It's no secret there is surveillance almost everywhere we go these days. Now one state is taking action to prevent the tracking of women who may be driving to get an abortion. Ann Thompson explains. Still to come here tonight, the rush to rent, why more people are saying yes to signing a lease and how it's shaking the foundation of housing in America. Trying to buy a home these days is a real struggle. Between high mortgage rates and low inventory, many are finding themselves priced out. But as CNBC's Diana Olick explains, it's fueling a boom in so-called build-to-rent properties. When we come back here tonight, the boys of summer back on this historic field of dreams. The remarkable story of how fans brought this baseball stadium back from the brink.
Across the country today, people mark Juneteenth with parades, festivals, and marches marking the end of slavery in the U.S. And at this beloved baseball stadium, players and fans are reclaiming a part of African American history on their very own Field of Dreams. Ron Allen explains. A piece of history. That's nightly news for this Monday. Thanks for watching. I'm Lester Holt. Please take care of yourself and each other. Good night.